a clever way to save money or is it cheating? KSL's Matt Gebhardt has been investigating how some car buyers are avoiding paying their sales taxes. Matt? Yeah, guys, one of the biggest expenses that comes with buying a car is taxes, but some have found a loophole to avoid them. Ever play the license plate game with your kids where you count the out-of-state plates? Well, we did along the Wasatch Front, and we spotted more than a few from Montana. Yeah, sure, these could be folks in from Kalispell or Billings or Deer Lodge, but not every plate you see is on the up and up. This is money saver. This is all about money. Jace Watkins Jeep has Utah plates now, but it used to have these. You see, despite buying the truck here in Utah, he had it registered in Montana. Why? Because Montana actually does not have sales tax on vehicles. Jace was doing some work in Montana, so he had a physical address in Big Sky Country. And by avoiding Utah sales tax... You saved over $8,000? $8,000. Jace says he paid $125,000 in Utah for both the truck and another car he used to drive. In Salt Lake County, the combined state, county, and local sales tax rate is 7.25%. So carry the one, he actually saved just over 9 9,000 bucks. Jace paid not one dime of that. You're working the system nicely. I work the system nicely, yes. That's cheating. Isn't that cheating? You know what? If the shoe fits. Jace argues, no, he followed Montana law, and he thinks he did nothing wrong. He played with house money, and he won. I did have a residence. I had legal paperwork. Went into the DMV, showed them my lease. They let me register the vehicle. But to be clear, not everybody who pulls this maneuver has a place in Montana. Some open a shell company, an LLC in Montana. In fact, we found a whole bunch of companies that will do that for you. Then your Montana LLC buys the car and registers it, and you drive it as a company car. The tax laws and tax loopholes out there are so ginormous. A loophole some are using, but is it legal? It creates the illusion that... Jason Gardner of Utah's Motor Vehicle Enforcement Division says the law is clear. If a business entity has a vehicle and operates that vehicle primarily in, within Utah, the same standards applies. That business entity is deemed to be a domiciliary of Utah or a resident of Utah for purposes of registration as well. All right, maybe not clear unless you speak fluent legalese, but basically it says that if you or your Montana LLC buys a car and that car is going to reside in Utah, the sales tax should be paid in Utah and it should be registered in Utah. Though Gardner admits the law is frequently broken. There's a lot of money to, uh, that's being lost to the state from the sales tax that would otherwise be charged on these vehicles. And it's not always just about avoiding sales tax. Montana has no emissions requirements, so a car that's deemed too polluting for Utah can skip the smog tests and still get registered. We spotted this older car with a Montana license plate look surrounded by a license plate frame from a Utah dealership. And there is another law potentially being broken. Once considered a resident, you've only got 60 days to get Utah plates. Get caught breaking Utah's registration law and yet might wish you really were in Montana. They would be subject to all the back sales tax and 100% penalty of the sales tax amount that wasn't paid. So basically double sales tax. But even with clear rules, the government cannot say how big the scheme is because it is very challenging to enforce. Think about it. How is a police officer supposed to know if that's a car that is mostly used in Utah or if it's a bona fide Montanan just driving through? The folks at the Motor Vehicle Enforcement Division would like for people who do what you're doing to stop it, please. Right. How do you respond? I, I respond like, get them to change the sales tax. As for Jace, he says sales taxes are way too high, especially with vehicles typically being our second greatest expense, and for some, the greatest expense. We don't tax houses other than property taxes, so why should we not just do a property tax on this instead of sales tax? A lot of insurance companies are not fans of this move. Some may refuse to pay a claim if they find out the car resides somewhere else besides where it's listed on the policy. Now, coming up tomorrow night on KSL 5 News at 10, the airline canceled his flight, causing him to miss a cruise. But wait until you hear why his travel insurance is refusing to pay. That story coming up right here tomorrow night on KSL 5 News at 10. I'd be furious. Matt, looking forward to that one. Thank you.